Okay, so um, I don't know how much many of you already have used Google for that or not. Um, the idea is uh, it's, it's a mix between text and, and code cell. And first thing first, you need to actually connect with the pounds, and it will be um, it will be so a virtual machine hosted on uh, by Google, where you can actually that you can either click on the on the left on the run button, or you can use shift and enter as a shortcut to, to make things run uh, faster. And uh, so this notebook is both about the basic uh, API with Jim and also basic usage of SV3. And, and if you are fast, actually there's some additional optional exercise at the end. And I will start with, I will say a code along and then I will uh, give you some time for an exercise. So the first thing you need to do is actually install the dependencies. So using just pip install is enough. Uh, the dependency above is just for rendering in uh, the browser. And the second package we need to install is SV3 Contrib, which has just uh, additional algorithm included. Um, as, a, as a recap, the, the first thing we're going to, to take a look at is the gym interface. So basically, to, so to create an environment uh, with gym, you will need to define an observation space, an action space, and uh, the reset and step method. So the reset is all about how do you start a new trial? How do you start a new episode? And the step is doing one step usually in the simulation in your environment or on the real robot, and we return the different uh, interesting thing for your agent to do. That. Um, and as a concrete example of how to do that, this this is a minimal custom environment that you can write. So it has an observation space with one spot in. Uh, dimension and the action space is a uh, six dimension and the two are continuous. So we are using uh, gym.spaces.box for that. And, and the minimal example for a gym environment is actually just to sample at resets, you, you will return an observation and you can just sample it from the observation space. And the step in the step method, so it takes as input an action which can be either for discrete action uh, integer or for continuous action, it would be a numpy array. And um, then you, what you return is uh, the new observation, which here we just sampled from the observation space, uh, the immediate reward, which is uh, so just a scalar, so just a float, whether the episode is terminated or not, and some additional information. And this is exactly what I talked about, which is treating termination uh, due to timeout differently. Uh, if you pass this key, so time limit that truncated to stable vision three, it will automatically um, bootstrap uh, the, the reward in case you, you have a termination due to timeout. And uh, we have a half checker actually to tell you if everything is nicely set up for SD3. Uh, which you can use when you create custom environments. So you can always check. It will also output warnings in case you did not normalize uh, from the action space or in case you are using uh, shapes that are, don't, do not match. And here, everything passes, so there's no error. There's uh, no output. Um, so to use stable business tree, you just import the different algorithm you want to use uh, from it. That's, that's a different uh, line. And then you need to specify, so a network architecture, we will be using mostly MLP policy because we are not using images in, in this tutorial right now, uh, and, um, and pass the environment. And the environment can be defined uh, as I do here by, by creating, uh, directly instantiating the environment, or if you register it, you can directly pass an ID or string to, uh, to the agent. Um, and, and here we will be using actually the pendulum amp where you need to swing up a pendulum, a pendulum in the upright position because we will have also one uh, for real gear and it will be demonstrated very soon by Vasa uh, and And the very the easiest way to, um, well, to set up everything is to, to then uh, pass, you select the uh, agent you want to run pass the environment. Here I've uh, added also some custom uh, hyperparameter, which uh, oh yeah. 
parameter, uh, which are tuned actually for the test because we don't have much time in Colab. So uh, we could use the default one, but now um, I would like actually to train it in Colab so we don't have much time. And if you print so the observation space and action space of the pendulum, so it has two, um, two it's uh, uh, about the angle. So you have the uh, angle of the pendulum, actually the cosinus and the sinus uh, of, uh, of the pendulum, plus the angular velocity. So that's why you have uh, three uh, dimension and the action is just the torque that you send to the, to the motor. So to retrieve the first observation, we just uh, reset the environment using that uh, F that reset. And uh, when we want to predict an action with stable base entry, we can just uh, call model.predict and passing as input the observation and using here deterministic action. It actually uh, outputs the tuple, so it outputs the action and the hidden set in case you use recurrent policy. But for simplicity here, we are not using, uh, we're just using fit for the policy. And we can directly check, so what is the action? What is the action output that's our agent output? So it should be a one dimensional uh, array. That's the case. And we can check that this action is actually uh, the one expected. It, it's in the limits that uh, defined by the environment. Next things we need to do is actually step into the environment to get the new observation, the reward, uh, whether the, the episode is terminated, and some information about, uh, about the training. And for that, we just call uh, the step method passing the action uh, that we just got from the agent. And here we can check that so the new observation is again three uh, three dimensional. We have immediate reward here, and uh, the episode is not over. Actually, for the pendulum, the only termination is the timeout. And if um, the episode is over, what we should do is actually reset again the environment. So everything that I'm showing here, I would highly recommend you to actually open. Um, open uh, the stable base entry documentation because and uh, you can take a look at both the getting started and examples because this would be so the same API is shown here in case this is too small or in case I was a bit too fast. Um, so that's it. And, and the first, um, well, we don't have much time. So the first and last exercise that I would like uh, you to do is actually write a method that we use all the time, which is for evaluating an agent, either a pre-trained one or one is that is training or evaluating it uh, after, after training. And for that, this the goal is you will pass as input a base algorithm, could be any uh, stable business tree algorithm because they follow the same interface. So this method uh, is actually uh, it can be used for any, any algorithm. You will pass a gym environment and um, also on how many episodes do you want to evaluate the agent and whether you want to use the deterministic or, um, uh, or stochastic policy. And this method should so um, run the agent for the number of episodes that is specified, compute the cumulative reward for each episode and then compute the mean over all the episodes and return that mean. Um, is it clear enough or should I, should I maybe repeat or show again some quotes? Maybe the bus also in the Discord or in the Zoom, 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 Zoom is fine. So if everything is fine, then uh, I will give you 10 minutes and after 10 minutes, we will uh, correct together. And in case you are faster, uh, actually there's below this additional exercises uh, that you can take a look at. So let's go. And I will, I mean, we will pass by uh, in case you've got, uh, you've got issue and you need, uh, you need help. Um, so what do we need to do? We need to run um, an episode, collect uh, the immediate reward and uh, cumulative reward for each episode and then 
uh, compute the mean. So for that, I will use a list that will um, actually contain each uh, cumulative reward. Why a list? A list because we can actually compute not only the mean, but for instance, the standard deviation, the median, and other statistics. Then we're just going to loop um, on the number of episodes. And here we uh, first need a different value. We will actually have um, the cumulative report. Yeah. Is it possible to zoom in it? Zoom in? Yeah. Okay, it's, I'm already pressing. It's easy. Here? Yeah. It's actually extremely different than my laptop. That's fine. Okay, so um, the next thing you need to do is actually define a cumulative reward per episode that we will set to zero. And we will actually uh, look while uh, the episode is not over. So while uh, the episode is not over, what do we do? We first take an action using model.predict. So model.predict returns a tuple, and here we're just going to use the action. It takes uh, the observation as input. So here we actually need to reset the environment because it's a new episode. And uh, we're going to use a deterministic, uh, well, we, depending on the deterministic parameter, we will uh, sample or just use the mode of, uh, of policy. Then we just retrieve a uh, new observation, the immediate reward if the episode is over, and some additional information using the step. A method we just seen before, and the action provided by the agent. We update our cumulative reward with the actual immediate reward. And if, if uh, the episode is over, what do we do? We simply uh, add this cumulative reward to the list. And uh, that should be it. And here we can uh, then compute directly uh, the mean episode reward using numpy, numpy mean on, uh, on the list. Uh, and we could in fact print it. So here mean episode rewards. And we have formatted using uh, two uh, figures after the and same, we could actually have the standard deviation using MP the standard deviation. And here again, the standard deviation we format it and nice. Uh, then I need to zoom out a bit because I don't think it's that should be. And then we can actually try to run it here with deterministic true. So we are running it on the um, on the untrained agent. So the reward is quite low; it's around minus one thousand. The trained agent for the pendulum is around minus two hundred. And because it's a very useful function that we use all the time, stable based history has obviously a helper function that already defined that function. It has some nice tweaks, like it can uh, evaluate multiple environments at the same time for past evaluation. And we can compare then the outputs of what we just got to, uh, to the stable Bayesian helper. So here we have, we're just going to see the environment so we can have the same result. And if you compare the two, normally you should have the same mean and standard deviation, which means that your implementation is correct. I will just leave it here a bit more. Is there any question maybe quickly? And then I think on time of time, I'm right on time. Which means so um, in case you, you want to uh, go more into the detail later on. Um, so actually what we, we can finish by training the agent and evaluating the agent, um, which is just a one line of code for training and evaluation is again, now one line of code. And uh, here it was the end train agent, so it was minus 1,000. And normally, if you compare it to the train agent, you will, uh, you will actually see a big difference. 
and then we can record the video and show it uh, and display it. Record the video and display it. And uh, if you if you have more time, if you want to dig later on, there's some additional exercises about saving loading and checking that the loading was correct. And actually, there's also an exercise about uh, writing the timeout wrapper, so a wrapper that will actually uh, limit the number of time steps per episode, uh, which is actually very useful when uh, you, yeah, when you use RL because usually you have to truncate your episode, and but you need to tell the agent that the episode was truncated. Um, obviously, all the solution notebooks will be also online in case you didn't have time. Uh, and we will provide the link in the in the repo and in the ESPO. So here uh, we can see the agent is almost done training. We have different information. In fact, while training, we have all information about uh, the losses, but also information about uh, how many frames per second and the time elapsed since the start the beginning of training. And we have some mean episodic reward and mean episodic length that is the range over one every episode. And here you can see yeah, the, the reward mean reward improved a lot. And if you look at what was learned, uh, if you manage to actually learn to balance and swing up the band uh, in those very few languages. So thank you. And now it will be time for uh, eager X and then eager X session before. Uh,